Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Noah Kelman, and I'm here to teach you everything that I know about modern jazz piano and improvised music. Today we're talking about a subject that I've gotten a lot of requests about. How do we actually transcribe voicings, right? Lines is one thing, we can slow them down in a recording and just kind of pick it out note by note, but a voicing can be really tough because we've got these different shapes and clusters of notes. What are some strategies we can actually use for picking out a voicing out of a recording? Well, today we're going to talk about just that. But really quick, if you're new to my channel, please consider clicking the subscribe button and clicking the little bell to turn on notifications so you don't miss any more videos just like this one. And also, I would really appreciate you hitting the like button as that really, really helps me out. All right, without any further ado, let's jump right in. So I've been getting this question a lot. How can we actually transcribe voicings? And it took me a second to kind of come up with an answer. I, in fact, I almost was worried. I was like, hmm. Maybe you just gotta get better at knowing and practicing your voicing so that you can recognize the shapes and that's it, right? And I was like, that's not very helpful to people. I need to come up with something better here. So I've been really, really thinking about it and I think I actually did come up with some methodology here that is gonna be really helpful to you all for transcribing voicings. So the way I would think of jazz voicings in general is that really at the end of the day, there are some very typical shapes, especially when you look hand by hand. Our hands really are kind of made a certain way. The combination of our hand shape with also the different sounds of registers of the piano mean that we're actually going to probably encounter voicing shapes fairly frequently. Now the thing is, our hands have a certain shape and the keyboard has a certain sound, the piano has a certain sound, right, in different registers. As we get higher, it's easier to play clusters of notes and have it sound really nice, right? Um, if we do that lower, it doesn't sound as good, right? I don't want to say it sounds bad because that's subjective, but you know, I don't think it sounds as good. So we get more open shapes in the bottom. Because of that, we can actually kind of examine what the common shapes are and start to work on just hearing those. So if we're transcribing a voicing, we could actually start by trying to just figure out what is the shape in the left hand? So that's a really, really good method. So number one, when we're listening to a voicing, the first step I would recommend is, of course, what is the root of the chord? And then I would recommend figuring out what the top note is too, because I think that can be helpful. But from there, um, I want you to think, what are the different shapes that we can find in the left hand? So first of all, common one that may be great would be a fifth, right? Are the bottom two notes of the chord a fifth? If not, are they a major seventh? If not, is it maybe even a tenth? I actually don't know why I did the key of E. I can't reach a tenth with a black note, so I'm gonna move up to F. Is it a tenth or a minor tenth, right? Um, these are gonna be fairly open shapes, so just determining that bottom interval can be really, really helpful. Now, of course, we are kind of talking a bit about solo piano here. This could get a little bit trickier as we get into um, more rootless voicings, but we'll talk about that later, so be sure to stick around. Really quick, if you are learning something from this video, I would really, really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Also, if you wanna learn some more voicings and get these shapes under your fingers and into your ears, I have some awesome PDFs available at jazzpianoconcepts.com store. There are tons of voicings in there that specifically you can practice to get different shapes under your fingers. So we have some kind of common shapes here. I mean, you might see a fourth, but I think more likely it's gonna be a fifth, a seventh, maybe an octave with a fifth or a tenth of some kind. That's really kind of it, right? So here's a voicing, here's a voicing. You know what, I forgot one, a ninth. Maybe a one, five, nine. So our shapes, just to go over them again, we might have one, five, one, seven, one, nine, one, ten. Of course, we could have one flat three as well, one flat seven as well. But these are kind of the shapes we're gonna find. So especially in typical solo piano jazz voicings, right? Could also be some less common cases in which we get a six, right? 
So I kind of did a little there. But honestly, these shapes are really gonna help us get very, very far. So when you're listening to a voicing, see if you can determine that shape. Now on the right hand, we get a lot of triadic shapes. So get that top note, but maybe you can figure out what the triad is. So if you figure out the left hand, you already know this, you hear the top note. Now it's almost like uh, filling in a crossword puzzle. All right, we got the basics. What else is in there? See if you can just sing a note out loud, you know. Make sure you sing the right note and don't change. All right, cool. So we kind of found the note. Is there anything else? And you can actually just, sometimes I'll just experiment by just playing a bunch of different notes until I feel, I'll find one that feels right. Oh, okay. That feels right. That feels like the sound of what the player is playing. Then I'll play it with the recording. And if it feels like it matches up, it feels like nothing's clashing, I'm probably at the very least pretty close. So that's kind of the methodology that I personally would recommend using for transcribing a voicing. Now over time, voicings are just like memorizing flashcards. The more times you hear a specific shape or even practice it on the piano, you are just going to get quicker and it's gonna become more natural for you to actually recognize that shape. Now, what if we were talking rootless voicings? Well, there are also some, some fairly common shapes with rootless voicings. You might have a fourth. You might actually have a series of fourths, right? These are very common. These are kind of like so what voicings, right? So if you can get that left hand, do you have a fourth, right? Um, do you have a, uh, this is a very, very common shape. Do you have a tritone on bottom? Is it possible that above that tritone you have either a major third there or a fourth between these notes, right? Because there's a really good chance you will in the left hand, even on a rootless chord. Maybe there's a little crunch. Well, there's a pretty decent chance that that crunch is gonna come right there. And again, I'm talking for the left hand, right? We're getting this kind of little crunchy altered sound. So basically what I'm doing is I'm piecing together intervals, making sure that things don't clash as I play the voicing with the recording, and then I'm gonna search to fill in the crossword puzzle pieces, right? And if something's not working, it's not working. Find something else, right? So this is the methodology that I would recommend. I would actually love to hear if you all have different methodology for transcribing voicings. This is, this is more or less what I actually have always done to transcribe a voicing. And over time, it's just gotten so much easier because I recognize the shapes so much more quickly. I've practiced them. But if you all have different methodology for actually transcribing voicings, I'm really, really curious to hear what it is. Let's share the knowledge in the comments. Um, please let me know in the comments. I, I wanna know what other ideas you have for how we could actually better listen to a recording and hear what the voicings are being played. All right, everybody, thank you so much again for watching. Again, if you're new to the channel, please be sure to click the subscribe button and hit the bell to turn on notifications so you don't miss any more videos just like this one. Thank you so much, and I will see you next time.